Hey, welcome to the Gospel Edified YouTube channel, a platform where we help you grow in God's Word. We hope you'll be blessed by the words you're about to hear today. God bless you. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Three keys that can cause any man to become inexperienced, a sign and a wonder. Not just to produce signs and wonders, but to become a personification of this realm and this reality a sign and a wonder that your life becomes a fulfillment of prophecy when people see you they remember everything god has said because your life becomes they can see verses being fulfilled in your life when they look at your life they can see deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you they look at your life and you are like a well-watered garden your life becomes an explanation of the faithfulness of god the grace of God made manifest. Do you believe that? Please, I want you to lend me your attention for the next few minutes. Because you see, I told you that according to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6, the Bible says that the God of our Father had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. 1, 3. Ephesians 1, 3 had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. These are prophetic realities finished in Christ. But you see, the new birth gives the believer access, not just experience, access. Access does not equal possession. Access means that the, the possibility for possession has been created. Are we together now? If I gave you a check of a million naira, um, it is safe to begin negotiations with that check if you trust me but if the person needs cash there is a technology that has to convert that check to cash are we together so you can hold a check like a piece of paper and yet you will be surprised that you will not be able to do much with it if you say I am a million naira richer you are not lying but your lack your inability to cash that check will eventually make you look like a liar so I can't call you a liar because I see a check on your hand. But you are not able to make any purchases with it necessarily. You see that now. So access does not equal possession. There are many believers in the body of Christ bragging over access. And that is not wrong except that there has to be a technology of conversion to turn access to possession. The Bible says the word became flesh. The word became flesh. There was a conversion process. It became flesh. Then it dwelt among us as flesh. Then the Bible says we beheld. We beheld. The word became flesh. The business was made manifest. The favor was made manifest. For as long as we keep claiming things that never find expression in our world, we mock ourselves and our convictions. The Christian experience was never supposed to just be believed arbitrarily. You start by believing, but you can taste and see that the Lord is good. There is an experience. Are we together now? The Bible says in Acts chapter 8, I hope we're still together. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5, it says, Philip went down to Samaria and there he preached Christ unto them. And that the people gave heed with one accord, listening intently to the things that Philip spake. Why? Because they heard, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. He did not just carry grammar or language. When he said God lifts, they saw that God lifts. When he said God restore, it's important for people to see what you are saying God can do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders. Key number one, for every believer who means business with God, business with destiny, and you intend to become a manifestation of this prophetic word, that nations, men, all and sundry will call you a sign and a wonder. The first key is that you must have an experience with the God of the Bible. Now, don't assume you understand what I just said. Please follow carefully. You must have an experience with the God of the Bible. 
I would always make reference to a statement that I heard and I learned years ago. The God you know is the God you reveal to your world. You cannot reveal a lifting God when you have not encountered him as a lifting God. The God you know, the one you meet, is the one you reveal to your world. I hope you know that the God of Abraham is still the God of Isaac, is still the God of Jacob, but his revelation according to these names is not the same. No. There is what the God of Abraham alone can do that the revelation of him as the God of Isaac will not do. What Jairah would do is not what Rapha will do, although it is the same God. Are we together now? Yes. So the God that you encounter is the one you reveal to your world. If your revelation of God is weak and impotent, it is because your encounter is the same, weak and impotent. Moses said, who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? I cannot go and stand before Pharaoh and advocate an exodus just blindly. Let my people go. Pharaoh will say, what is the meaning of that? Where was that God for 430 years while these people were in captivity? And Moses said, the issue is not the captivity. The issue is not Pharaoh. The issue is not your people. The issue is me and you. Who shall I tell them has sent me? I assure you that life and destiny will ask you this question. Who sent you? Who sent you that you want to build the biggest business across Africa? By what audacity do you know the controlling spirits that have tied and destroyed lives? Who sent you? Life will ask you. Who the meaning of all this is that from today your life ceases to be ordinary. In the name of Jesus Christ. That in every area of calling, profession, vocation, you will import a level of excellence that is not ordinary. You will import a level of wisdom and creativity that your life will be verses on the open. People will look at you and learn God in a way they have never known. You believe that? Shout amen. So God desires that our lives capture results. Results that bring glory to the name of the Lord. The third point I wanted to take note of, I wrote here that every believer in Christ, now listen, what I said before now is the reason why I'm about to say a very profound statement that the empowerment of the believer is God's commitment to help achieve the goal I just explained. The value of spiritual empowerment is to this end, that believers be fruitful. Are we together? That believers produce, that believers advance, that believers become objects of praise, that while serving the purposes of the kingdom, your life does not fail to capture and reveal the glory of God. It is in support of that agenda that the subject of empowerment becomes necessary. I made it, I wrote something here and I wanted to listen. Every believer in Christ, I said, has access to the empowerment of the spirit to make you an effective witness. But you see, access does not equal possession. Our discussion begins now. Every believer in Christ the moment you confess the lordship of jesus over your life according to romans chapter 10 9 and 10 according to john 3 16 are we together now the moment you confess the lordship in order of spiritual priority this is the first port of call that in your pursuit to becoming like god living a life of excellence and beauty and glory it is important you follow the protocol the protocol number one is an encounter with the son of god jesus you can encounter a man of god you can encounter religion you can encounter a church none of them in themselves can impart eternal life the bible says this is the record that god had given us eternal life but he structured eternal life such that you must encounter the son to have that life he says he that does not have the son does not have life do we agree yes so when you receive the son 
it's important for you to know that there are dimensions beyond that initial salvation experience leading to empowerment the empowerment of the spirit is vital and is necessary to the ex for the excelling of the saints if you are not empowered you will live an ineffective life ineffective in every sense and in every ramification now isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18 isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18 makes a very profound statement um okay beautiful i want us to read it together if you see it projected ready one to read uh-huh thank you it says i and the children that the lord has given me your child there does not just mean a biological person anything that comes out of you is your child your business is your child your vision is your child it says i and the children that the lord has given me i and the business that the lord has given me i and the school that the lord has given me i and the church that the lord has given me everything around you he says we are for signs and for wonders in israel signs and for wonders in lagos in nigeria in africa are we together now i and the children that the lord has given me are for signs and wonders The Bible tells us in Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. Zechariah 8 and verse 23. Please give it to us so that I'll tie up a few things. Zechariah 8 and verse 23. My goodness. Profound scripture. Let's know when you find it, media. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. Let me pull it up here very quickly. Beautiful. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days, someone said, These are the days. In those days, it shall come to pass, uh huh, that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a jew a covenant person saying we will go with you we will go with you for we have heard this is why we will go with you we have heard that god is with you we have seen the results from your business we have seen the results from your life it is clear unmistakably clear that god is with you the Bible says they will come. Reminds me of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. It says, arise, amplified, says from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. Arise, shine, it says, for your light is come. And the glory, there you have it again. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, for darkness shall cover the earth. Is the expression to who bohu confusion and chaos and gross darkness the people he says but upon you the glory of god shall arise i like verse 3 my god i receive it as a prophecy for myself that gentiles shall come to your light gentiles he never said they will come to you no gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles shall come to your light their kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles shall come to your light they won't ask you where you are coming from mm -mm. Mm -mm. provided you carry that light the world is too dark for light bearers to be ignored no are we together we hope you've been blessed by the word of god today don't forget to like subscribe and share so that you'll be notified whenever we have any new content coming up remember to stay edified we love you and god bless you